Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us um, for this 19th episode, right? For our monthly astrology and global trends talk, where we will forecast the energy and also the potential happenings, events, global trends, events in the upcoming month, which, which is January 2024. In January 2024, actually, it's a month of needing through or biting through a tough obstacles. I will show you what it means later on. It's quite interesting. The hexagram also is quite interesting that depicts this. This is our outline for the talk agenda. As usual, we start with the introduction, disclaimer, and then a brief recap of last month's forecast and the influence of the five elements energy, including the hexagram in January 2024, and also what are the forecasts of January 2024 based on the research done by PC on geopolitical finance. We will end with a summary and also a Q&A if anybody has any questions. The disclaimer here that we would like to put up is this content is purely based on our global trends study related to Chinese astrology and also research for you to use as a guideline in your investment decision. We would like to ex we would like you to exercise cautions in investment, especially in such volatile situation and also do your own research on what you want to invest in. This platform, we will not give any stocks advice. Let's recap on what happened in the month of December 2024. Actually, month of December, next year we know that it's a wood dragon year. And month December, the pillar is also a wood wood red and the wood energy the heaven stem energy already starts to come in already even before february 4th february 4th the li chun or the arrival of spring is always the transition of energy from the year before to the next year so next year's dragon year does not start on february 10 which is the chinese new year but it starts on February 4th. And if you have any babies that born after February 4th, it's considered as a dragon baby. Okay. So in December, is the year pillar is still Kui Mao or water, rabbit. It means water is strong. It will give rise to the wood itself. Okay. And also, wood, sea, wood is also a rock wealth. So it's actually quite a conflict month as well. So you can see that I have forecasted that breakthrough in technology, more conflict in different parts and more unrest um, in different parts of the world. And the hexagram is stagnant reception. That means it will be like a new beginning with the chia coming in that grows things. And I also actually advise that that time, it was a time for you to grow. When I presented it in last November, okay, the energy came quite fast. If anyone had taken the advice in November, uh, they would have reaped the reward in December. Unfortunately, I also got it wrong in terms of the potential stagnation of down index. Okay. Um, where this year has moved to one of the highest. It was like 37,000 points, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah 37 point something, if I'm not mistaken. So actually, when I check and do my own research, I asked why the down index has moved to the highest. It states that the inflation is down, which I doubt so. Because every month we go through the global research. We know that what 
truly goes on. And strong corporate training, I'm earning. Yes, I believe that because some companies that are in AI, in technology, yes, their earning has triple, you know, has double or triple. Okay, but not every company. It's only selected few that is aligned to the era, to the new era of fire. Okay, and also due to economic strength. Um, I would really doubt that it's really due to economic strength. However, that is the narration that we get to boost up the down index. But whoever, you know, rip the profit, I think it's going to be like a windfall also, in a way. Okay. Um, Evelyn, I think uh, uh, going back to where we got wrong, uh, mm. actually we didn't really get it wrong, you know. Let mm. me explain. Uh, inflation is down because it is uh, managed in such a manner that it's down. Now, during the past few months, they actually have uh, have uh, put in that the inflation for insurance is down by 30 over percent. Now, insurance actually have gone up and not gone down. But because it remains in a very low subset of the components, uh, therefore, you know, it is being uh, just put down a figure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing is that uh, if you follow shadowstats.com, uh, com, where they actually trace back the calculation of inflation all the way from the nineteen nineties, inflation is still actually double digit. So, uh, the inflation is managed down by the government because they do not want to raise interest rate anymore. Okay, and because there's a lot of distress in the uh, in the uh, in the banks. And later on, I will share in my slides why the Fed decide to pivot, okay, mm. from being uh, hawkish to dovish. So uh, I will explain that in a while. Now, strong corporate earning, I think, uh, is also a bit of a uh, uh, interesting news that I managed to get that people really go into the details, especially uh, Nvidia. Nvidia actually had a uh, you know like. 200 or 300 percent bit so people actually trace back and media where the chips are being sold so the chips apparently are being sold to uh, some entity that is created by Nvidia to uh, that is that is actually a uh, uh, development of AI so that entity is a subsidiary of Nvidia and that subsidiary is buying Nvidia chips. So it is like selling back to your own company, okay? And uh, the other thing is that people also trace, uh, because Nvidia also list a number of uh, partners. So what happened is people really took the took the, uh, the 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 time to really track down all these partners, and some of them are actually uh, a small industry in Singapore, where it imported a lot of AI chips. So they were saying that this company, even though it's uh, Singapore, is not even a major uh, AI, uh, AI, uh, AI hub, AI hub, uh, mm. but they imported so many chips. So then they also tracked another one to a uh, to a IT store. I I think in either in Taiwan or in China. I think probably in Taiwan because Nvidia cannot sell to China. So it was also buying a lot of AI chips, you know, just an IT store. So these people, they were saying that either uh, Nvidia is uh, boosting the uh, boosting the, the share higher because it allowed all the uh, top management to actually uh, sell their shares. And in fact, Nvidia actually recorded a lot of the uh, top management selling their shares during the months of um, uh, during the months after the uh, announcement of the Q3. Mm. So uh, that is why uh, some people are saying that, you know, some the the data, the, you know, the bid may not be as strong, but because it's selling back to its own subsidiary. And also there are challenges that NVIDIA could be bypassing the sanction by selling through, let's say, small entities, which they then, you know, repackage and sell to China. So, uh, 
uh, and media is one topic that uh, in the Twitter sphere, uh, sphere is very active. You know, people accusing uh, and media, you know, of of not uh, being transparent. Now, the economic strength, uh, uh, people also have, uh, analysts have also go through the, 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 the US uh, GDP and they found out one thing. Now, in the US, if let's say you are paying, uh, you are actually owning a house, okay? And you are paying the uh, monthly installment. So what the US have taken that as, since you are already owning a home, by right, you know, you should be paying a rental. But because you own a home, you can you you no need to pay a rental. Therefore, they use the home ownership and work out and rent equivalent. Okay. And then they put it as the GDP. Oh. You know what I mean? So then the GDP got inflated. Mm. And uh, because if you own a home, you actually no need to, to, to buy anything already, ma, because your home is there. But they but then they still work it out that anyone who owns a home should actually be paying a rental equivalent. And that oh. rental equivalent is then built into the GDP. Mm. <laughs> so uh, this is that's that's why you know we may not be wrong after all because there are a lot of shenanigans uh, with the uh, with the with the data, mm. and 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 because of that, uh, people are exposing it you know very frequently now on the Twitter sphere, and that's why you know you you later on you say you know your topic will say about a lot of truth being being proof bombs uh, yeah. being released into the market. So mm. this is what is happening, okay? So um, uh, uh, we may not be wrong, but because the data is managed, managed such, such a way that it's an election year next year, therefore they do everything they can to tell that, you know, the economy is being uh, positively uh, navigated, okay, to a soft landing, everything is okay, you know, but Actually, if you if you go into the fundamentals here, the number of homeless people in the US has just reached a new record high. You know, how can that how can the economy be so strong while the number of homeless just go uh, just shot up to a record high? And the other thing is that more middle income group have moved down to the poverty line. This is so, not a surprise. This is in line with period nine. I already say ma. The yeah, middle so that, income will be why, move up or move yeah. down. Yeah, so that's why we 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 may not be wrong, okay? Because other data is already showing. And if you want to go for a comparison, yeah, mm. Germany is already on the verge of recession, but its mm. stocks, its stock market still went into a new high. <laughs> yeah. It so went the other that, way, that that is the yeah. You know, there's no more. There's no more. Uh, correlation, yeah between a stock market that has entered into a casino phase and the underlying fundamentals of the economy. And therefore, you know, that casino is going to burst uh, at some point in time. But I don't think it will be, a, some people are saying that it's going to be a huge crash, but, I, but other people are saying that it is going to be, you know, gradual uh, decline over a certain period and after that, people looking back, they will say, my gosh, you know, it has gone down so much. So there will not be any huge crash according to some uh, momentum strategies. Okay. But there are also some economists that predict that there will be a crash. So it will be very interesting to see who comes out on top. Um. Okay. I From the energy standpoint, um, maybe we will share in the astrology talk, the annual one, that for our members, that I would think is more of a soft um more of a gradual decrease okay so uh yeah because um last month i stated that maybe the down will you know will gradually go down but it has moved up in state so that's a bit a lot of manipulations i think they will also try to get the stock market to the highest possible this is why i always say if you have profit take it that's all Later on, uh, we're go I'm going to share something very interesting. You know that mm. is called the go to uh the Dow to go ratio, which actually would measure the real money in the stock market. But you you go ahead, okay? 
Next. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. I also know that US they also printed a lot of money to introduce to the market. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of technology, um, as we say that there will be breakthrough. Um, there is breakthrough in terms of the quantum computing technology where you know um the challenges of superposition and in multiple states that which we are unable to control now that you know they have such capability to control the states in what they want so that it will become a more powerful computations when um the at the atomics level okay and also i think in ai driven discovery there also polycrystalline materials uh, which is important for ai chips uh, uh, has been this one um, has been discovered that will also pave the way uh, um, for a, a, an AI error as well. Okay. And in mean theory, I think we have a lot of that. I, PC will go through that. Even I think North Korea also and South Korea also have some conflict. And it, last month, I stated that the conflict will be focusing on the East, which is, you know, I'm now in North Korea and South Korea started to see sign of unrest and military activities as well. Okay. So let's go through the month, January 2024 energy. Uh, in the January, energy is actually yi cho, which is the soft wood or the yin wood and the cho, which is earth, okay? This is actually ox, or we call it cho. The quay water actually will create more of yi wood, okay? And also the cho here, that's why in terms of here, the earth will be weakened, where government weakening, as we can see, and rules and regulation changing and also is predicted that may, there could be potential slowdown of the stock market after the bull run in December. Okay. And the man hexagram is biting through hexagram number 21. It's actually very interesting. How you see this hexagram is, uh, you see, these are actually... This is mouth, top and bottom, lips. These are all teeth. And this is a piece of something uh, inside the mouth uh, that you have to bite through. Okay, maybe bones or whatsoever that you have to bite through. And this is actually a zhen gua, a thunder. That's why here the thunder um, is this one. That means it's bound for quite big changes. That's what thunder is. Or uh, in, in other words, some practitioner, they call this hexagram punishment as well. It signifies biting through a tough obstacle uh, in the global trends. Uh. Evelyn, uh, yeah. Evelyn, uh, yeah. you know, biting through something, uh, <laughs> if let's say it's biting through a bone, then I think we have a hard landing. Uh. If biting <laughs> through tofu, uh, then maybe we have soft landing. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, okay. So it's it, this is not tofu. This one is a it's a solid <laughs> line, you know. Okay. 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 Yeah, it's a solid line means that it's something that is a tough obstacle, really say. Then potentially okay. the truth will reveal uh, um that could be justice and correction uh, in this wisdom. Uh. So there will be like professional society issues, many movement uh, is trying to uncover the truth. I think you already stated my Twitter and all these are uh, people are trying un to uncover the truth. This is why I say, you know, take profit wherever you can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Over to you, um, PC. Maybe you would like to share your own deck. Okay. I sure, can stop sure. sharing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, in one of the uh, trend forecasts, I mentioned that the bond market could be in trouble. 
uh, in December. But what we had was uh, the Fed coming out and say that uh, they will actually pause its rate hikes and then projected three rate cuts in 2024. So in some way that the bond market turmoil did not materialize. Okay, and the bond market rallied and was saved by the Fed. Now, if we look at it, you know, the Fed especially has been very concerned about the bond market because number one, the US uh, interest payment on debt has already reached more, uh, is already at the $1 trillion level. And with more new debt being issued over the next year, expected to be about $7.6 trillion. That interest on the debt will actually reach uh, about 1.5 trillion. Uh, but now that interest rate has come down, it will still be more than a trillion. So I think the Fed uh, has been pressured by either Yellen or the Biden admin to actually look at helping the government reduce its interest payment on debt. And that was why the Fed decided to pause. But there is also a lot of uh, uh, issues why the Fed themselves would have decided uh, on pushing down the yields. But let's explore where we got right. Now, as of uh, 20th December 2023, that Magnificent 7, okay, the, the fuel technology stock that is holding up the S&P, okay, is up 75% year on year. While the S and P four hundred and ninety three is up just twelve percent, a difference of sixty three percentage points. So that goes to show that all the money is being ploughed into the most crowded trade. And when all these magnificent seven, they are having PEs that are, you know, some of them even, uh, hundred over, okay, or seventy. Then that means that to really earn that much, yeah. Is equivalent to that that profit need to uh that profit need to uh be uh maintained okay or grow for the next you know 70 years or so. So that that is why it becomes very unrealistic. So and then there are cracks in the financial system, uh, and it has become more noticeable. The BTFP has reached a new record high of 131 billion. Now the BTFP was organized in March 2023 for a period of one year to help the banks, which actually saw the saw uh, four banks okay being uh being closed down. So that's why the uh the Biden I mean came up with the BTFP. So that program will end in mid-March 2024, after which the banks have to start to repay their loans. So but then you know the banks are not worried. Okay, with only a few months to go, they still continue to borrow at a record level. So that goes to show there's an underlying structural problem with a lot of the banks. And of course, most of it could stem from the uh, commercial real estate market, where a lot of properties are being sold at 45 to 50% discount. Okay, and that means that, you know, the loans that originally the banks were uh were uh were lending uh let's say it was worth 100 million and subsequently the they cannot they cannot uh, uh pay the loan so what they did okay they sell off the building okay so that actually destroyed the value of the loan now also there were massive bank layoffs uh which have been announced uh, in the month of December. Now, if let's say the banks are in good condition, the banks wouldn't have announced thousands of layoffs. That means that the banks themselves are having some problems already. A month to date, uh, in December, US government debt has increased by 50 billion to 33.94 trillion from 33.88 trillion in November, with another slew of auctions slated from 26 to 28 December 2023. So the debt continues to mount. We forecast that China will continue to unwind its holdings of US treasuries, and it did. 
So its total holdings now amount to 770 billion, down 8 billion from a month ago. So Fed decided to pause its interest rate hikes uh, in line with our forecast and surprised with three cuts projected in 2024. So that's why I say, you know, whatever that comes out from the mouth of the Fed, I think those of you who have followed me over the past year, I've always say, you know, watch what the Fed does, not what it says. And what the Fed say cannot be trusted. All the while from Ben Bernanke, where he said that there's no uh, problem with the housing market, which led to the global financial uh, crisis. And to Powell, who says that uh, inflation is transitory, okay? There's no worry about inflation. To Yellen saying that there's not going to be another crisis in her lifetime. So whatever the Fed says, don't trust them. And all the Fed officials have been saying higher for longer. Okay. And so what? Okay. Now it's, it has now changed. But right when they say higher for longer, it's supposed to be for many years. But right now, seeing the, the financial uh, system having some cracks, they actually decided to do an interest rate cut. So uh, in 2024. So where has the uh, higher for longer gone? Okay. So never trust the Fed. Now, the Atlanta GDP forecast uh, for Q4 is now at 2.3%, weaker than 4.9% achieved in Q3, in line with our expectations that Q4 will be weaker than Q3. And we predicted that Europe faces the risk of slipping into re recession. And here are the headlines okay, uh, from a number of uh, news outlets. Okay? And EU food inflation remains high at 6.8% in November, but has cooled from 7.6% in October. In food inflation in Europe could get worse. Uh, why? Uh, because I think in the members area, I already show you the, uh, the, the, the plan whereby they are going to cut about 50 fertilizing processing plants over the next few years. So when you cut the fertilizer, fertilizing uh, fertilizers plant. So where are the uh, agricultural uh, or the farmers are going to get their fertilizer from? And obviously, uh, they have to import it elsewhere and import would definitely be much more expensive. And therefore, it will be reflected in the price of food itself. So there is also more regulation imposed on masses, okay? which revolted against their government policies, especially on agriculture, immigration, and Middle East uh, crisis, among others. So you, if you go into YouTube or Twitter or any of the uh, social media, you can see that a lot of people are demonstrating against what is happening okay, in the Middle East. So China economy indicators uh, retain their growth momentum and resilience despite its sluggish real estate. And uh, some, I think two sessions ago, I showed you a chart that the real estate is being wind down, but heavy and uh, heavy and high tech industry is actually moving up. So that is actually good for the economy because any economy that, uh, that thrive, okay, that thrive on speculation, be it stock market or the, uh, or the, uh, uh, real estate is not good because you need a productive economy that is manufacturing goods and that such an economy is able to sustain itself in the long term. So if let's say you look at the US economy, it's very debt-based and because of it being debt-based, there's a lot of financialization of assets and it thrives on uh, uh, derivatives, uh, it, it is thrive on leverage and also, you know, it thrive on the government continue to print a lot more money. So, uh, and it all goes into speculation, not into the real economy itself. So that is not so good. So China heavy industries continues to outperform, uh, especially in shipbuilding, automotive and renewable industries. So China continues to enjoy trade surpluses as we uh, uh, 
forecasted and more tension in South China Sea and Middle East as predicted. So let's look at the US economy, economic indicators. So CPI was up 0.1% month on month in November. Year on year, it grew 3.1%, down from 3.2% in October. Core CPI came in at 0.3% month on month in November. And year on year, it grew 4%, unchanged from October. So you can see that the uh, year on year remained unchanged, but the Fed is already you know, changing its tune. So that means that what the Fed does will be eventually result in the weakening of the US dollar. So if the US dollar weakens, that means the cost of goods importation and the cost of, uh, uh, of uh, resources, raw materials will actually increase. And that means that inflation would return. So PPI was unchanged month on month uh, in November. Year on year, it gained 0.9%, down from 1.2% in October. Retail sales came in at 0.3% in November. And month, uh, year on year, it gained 4.1%. Much of the retail sales were driven by buy now, pay later. And net retail sales less CPI was 1%. Now, what does it mean buy now, pay later? So the spike in the retail sales in November was driven because all the major retailers like Walmart, Target, they are encouraging consumers to buy household goods which has a credit term. Okay, So this, of course, when it has a credit term, people will rush and buy because there's no need. I need food. Okay, because of inflation, you know, last time I can, uh, I need to save on my food. But now with this, but buy now, pay later, I can have more food because I need to only pay later, you know. And later to me, you know, I may not live, uh, I, I may not be able to indulge myself, okay, uh, later. Might as well, I indulge myself now, okay. So because of this, a lot of the retail sales actually went up. But... Actually, that's, this is just another form of debt, okay? There's no real money uh, that is, uh, that is, that is uh, uh, being spent, okay? It's just debt. And that is why uh, it can be very bad for the retailers when a lot of people, uh, if they are buying food on credit, means they cannot afford food already. So that means that somewhere along the line, they are just won't be able to pay up. And therefore, it, it will be bad for the retailers. So industrial production fell. Okay, not fell, yeah, rose. Industrial production rose 0.2% month on month in November. And year on year, it fell 0.4%. The... NAHB index came in at 37 in December, down from 34 in. It's up. Up from 34. So the index actually have improved. Uh, this is the National Association of Home Builders. So the index came in stronger in December, but then it's still in contraction. So housing starts rose 14.8% month on month in November, while housing permits fell 2.5%. So existing home sales. Sorry, we are just changed the figure without changing the uh the tax itself. So existing home sales rose 0.8% month on month in November, but year on year it fell. 7.3%. New home sales plunged 12.2% month on month in November and year on year it rose 1.4%. So PMI for manufacturing went into contraction to 48.2 while services remain in expansion at 51. So if we look at it, the US is a mixed bag of data. Okay, but what is more interesting is the Conference Board uh, Leading Economic Indicators, or LEI, which saw its 
declined, continuing in November, dropping 0.5% month on month. And this is the 20th straight month on month decline in the LEI, the longest streak of decline since Lemon, 20, where it has 21 months of declines out of 23. So year on year, it fell 7.6%. So, of course, the Fed decision uh, did caught some people by surprise because people expect the Fed to pause, but then they decided to uh, project three uh, interest rate cuts in 2024. But since the Fed has uh, started uh, projecting three interest rate cuts, analysts have actually gone back to some of the fundamentals of the economy, and they are actually forecasting six interest rate cuts in 2024. And that was why uh, we saw the US dollar falling back to one, uh, the DXY, okay, falling to 101 from about 105 uh, before the Fed pivoted. Now, I think the most concerning part is that, you know, is with regard to the BTFP loans, which I reach a new record high so of 131.34 billion up from one hundred and fourteen point zero nine billion a month ago so you can see that it actually has a very steep climb here okay and by mid-March 2024, the program will come to a stop and banks would need to start servicing the loans. And according to Business Insider in November, the unrealized losses among the US banks were $620 billion. And uh, some news that I came across suggested that the loss could be as high as uh, $680 billion uh, as of December. Now, this could be the reason why the Fed paused and projected interest rate cuts in 2024, a move which could help the banks stem the losses. Now, why the banks actually have unrealized losses was because of the treasuries that they held, uh, which saw a decline in value. Because if yields go up and yield being inverse to the value of the bond, Therefore, if yields go up, means the bond value have actually dropped. And these banks actually hold the bonds as assets in their balance sheet. So if the price drop, that means they have unrealized uh, losses. Now, one of the key things that uh, just now Evelyn said that earnings were strong. Okay, yes, among the banks, you know, earnings were strong. But then they actually have a trick. Okay, that is unrealized losses are not marked to market. So that's why the banks, they say, oh, we have so many billions of uh, profit. If let's say, you know, the losses were actually marked to market, then a lot of the banks are actually are in deep trouble. But then they allow banks not to mark to market for unrealized losses. So that's why, you know, uh, these are hidden, okay? And not, not, account, not uh, accounted as, actual loss themselves. But the other thing is that the unrealized losses also came from the destruction of the commercial real estate loans because uh, the value of the real estate has dropped and therefore the loan actually saw a decline in the value of the loan because the real estate doesn't command that kind of price anymore. So I think this is one of the reasons that the Fed is very concerned about the unrealized losses and if let's say they don't start to help lower the unrealized losses through interest rate cuts or by narrative to force the price of bond higher, then you know it could be a problem when they actually stop the BTFP program. Now, a lot of um, uh, hypotheses are also there that the Fed may not stop the BTFP because uh, it could endanger the banks if, let's say, it's cut suddenly. So that is why they see that it may be extended for a, for a certain period, maybe another year more, to allow the Fed to actually cut interest rate and therefore lower the unrealized losses further. 
So in a way, that is a stealth QE, okay? And that means that uh, because of that, the chances are uh, the, uh, the, the stock market can still have some legs to move up. Although, you know, uh, not all the companies would actually see that kind of uh, uh, move up because like I say, you know, the Magnificent 7 will outperform because the other 493 will actually underperform. So what is more concerning about the 493, okay, that uh, just barely up about 10 per, uh, 12% year on year. So the other thing is that uh, this is the unreal line losses. Okay, so this is the latest figure uh, that is in, uh, maybe I should just change this one to 680 in December. So this is the latest unrealized losses uh, in December. Okay, you can see that it's already 680 billion. Now, the other thing is that the Fed losses. So the Fed actually lose money. Okay, so, and how does it incur this? Now, here it mentioned that the Fed is on target to incur more than 130 billion losses by the end of the year. The losses happen when the Fed pays out more interest via bank reserves, money market funds than it earns, which are the treasuries and MBS that it holds okay, uh, in its assets. So the losses are parked as deferred assets, which will be paid down when the Fed returns to profitability. And the losses, however, do not affect the Fed in any ways. They can still do whatever they want. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay. But if let's say the Fed continue to see tremendous of losses, it will still matter because it questions okay, the people's confidence on the ability of the Fed to continue uh, to function uh, in the way that it does. So if the Fed cuts, then the amount of interest paid out will gradually reduce, thus stemming the Fed losses. So they are also very concerned. And why are they concerned? Because the Fed is not a government agency. The Fed is run by private banks. They are profit-driven. And what are the private banks? You know, banks like JP Morgan, Citibank, okay, they own the Fed. And if let's say they are in there to make money from the financial system, from the uh, Federal Reserve System, but with this kind of loss, they cannot stomach it. So that could be another reason why the Fed one need to pivot because they need to stem the losses, okay? Because otherwise, you know, they don't get to they don't get any any earnings. The Fed wouldn't have any earnings to dispute to the private banks. Now the other thing is that consumers uh, uh, delinquency rate, okay? Um that is uh, very worrying. Last month I shared with you the chart uh, about consumer delinquency in multifamily housing, which have reached its highest level since the global financial crisis. While the delinquency rate of um delinquency uh growth rate in credit card is higher than even two thousand and eight. But this is what is happening. You can see that the credit card borrowings or credit card debt has actually been moving higher and higher just as interest rates are actually moving higher. That means that delinquency rate of uh, consumers will be much higher. Okay, so the consumers are under stress. So here you can see that the delinquency rate of multifamily housing have reached its highest level since the um, uh, global financial crisis. Okay, and the default growth rate of credit card delinquency is even higher than the financial crisis. So the consumers are tapped out of credit. They got no money, okay? How are they going to service their loans? And that is why the Fed is worried because if the consumer cannot service their, their loans, then that means that they cannot pay their mortgage, 
they cannot pay their credit card loan, the default rate will actually skyrocket. And if let's say the default rate skyrockets, then a lot of the banks will be in trouble. Now, the other thing is that the businesses themselves are also under stress. Now, this is the amount of bankruptcy filed to date in December uh, of 516, which is slightly below 2020 uh, of 518. And uh, during the height of the financial crisis, still some to go, but there are some weeks in, uh, I think this is um, until November, not, not December. So there could be some more here that could put it as the third highest, okay, uh, among the, uh, among the, uh, uh, third or fourth highest, okay, among maybe 2010, 2011, and 2020. So what could happen to the U.S. in the uh, month of January? Now, the stock market seems to be overbought. Okay. But the rally could sustain further due to expectations of an early cut, especially if economic indicators weaken. So it has become a, a something uh, that bad news is good news for the stock market. You know, it means that if let's say the economic news are poor, uh, then what happened is that the Fed would cut and therefore the stock market would do well. So I think there are indications that it's certainly overbought. But then, you know, it could happen in such a manner that the first few, few first one or two weeks may see the stock market continuing the rally, but the second half could see it softening. Um, because I think um, it could be driven by several things because uh, it could be geopolitically uh, related. It could be financially related because um, uh, one bank could certainly announce that they are in trouble and then, you know, the fear factor comes in again. So let's see how is it. But at its stance, it's overbought. But I think the rally can still sustain a bit more because of all the expectations of an early cut. Now, financial stress in the system remains and some banks may show signs of weakness, especially pertaining to unrealized losses. And recently, there are a lot of uh, talks in the Twitter sphere about uh, some uh, derivatives uh, that has actually uh, uh, blown up, okay? And uh, when it comes to derivatives, it is not something that we say, we can say is in the billions or trillions, okay? derivatives are actually in the quadrillions. Oh, that means huh. 15 zeros. Huh. Okay. So <laughs> that is, that, there's a lot of chat uh, in Twitter sphere that they say uh, somewhere certain derivatives trades have actually blown up. And that is why they are trying to cover it by trying to push the stock market higher. So that's uh, what I, I watch on the Twitter sphere. But so far, no one has proof of it, but there were a lot of chatter in that regard. So Fed will increasingly turn dovish as signs of trouble in the financial system uh, bubble to the surface. And uh, uh, that's why the stock market will think, okay, you know, let's, let's go up higher. Now, do not forget that in 2007, when the Fed started to cut, the stock market actually went up higher. But in mm. 2008, the stock market actually crashes down. So uh, these are the kind of uh, behavior that uh, normal, how a casino behave, okay? The stock market is like another casino right now because sentiment has all been too uh, overly positive, uh, positive. There's a lot of greed in the stock market right now. So uh, you that's need why to I caution say, yourself. Yeah. That's why I yeah, say take ahead. profit. Yeah. Because the similar thing happened in 2007 when the Fed realized that something is really bad with the housing market. They start to cut interest rate. But then everyone is saying, oh, you know, they cut interest rate. You know, that means you know, let's be bullish. And then 20, uh, 28, everything just collapsed. Mm. So 
um, we can see the sign maybe in 2024, it can still go up, but 2025 will be more unsettling in that sense, perhaps. So US government run away, that binge may hasten the de dollarization process. China could see further divestment of its US treasury holdings. Now USD could weaken further, but the ECB will likely mirror the Fed by turning dovish, which could lend support to the US dollar. So the Fed, the, the ECB would be saying would, would be saying that, my gosh, you know, the Fed was saying higher for longer, and then suddenly they, they decided to cut in 2024. <laughs> Our European economy is actually a disaster. Why not we also start to cut? So if the ECB cut, then of course the US dollar would actually move up in the DXY. So that is uh, something that could happen if the ECB mirror the Fed. So gold will likely perform well in such a scenario. Uh, what is interesting to watch will be the Dow to go ratio, which could be trending down. Now, that goes to show that if the Fed prints more money, the stock market may go up. But in terms of real value or real money that is in the stock market, which if we use gold to measure, then that ratio could be trending down, which means even though the stock market looks high, but in terms of the ratio go the stock market to go ratio it could be trending down to even at one time it reached one to one level okay that means that if let's say the downtrend the the, the down goes up to let's say uh 40000 okay if a one to one ratio that means gold will go down will go up to 40000 if let's say the stock market continue to go up now unless the down starts to fall in which sense, if let's say it's a one to one, let's say the Dow falls to less, uh, let's say uh, 25,000, okay, then go would one to one ratio would be 25,000. Now, it has happened before in history. Uh, uh, you know, this is not just uh, simply plucking out from thin air. Hmm. So that means that in terms of real value, that is, you know, uh, the Dow no longer has a very high real value. It's just like in Venezuela. Okay, Venezuela stock market keeps on bursting record high because of inflation. But in terms of gold value, it has become gold has become such a scarcity that its value is even much higher. So that is a kind of scenario when inflation breaks all the rules and then it goes into hyperinflation. And that is when the Dow and Go ratio could actually uh, narrow down. So this is something that has happened in history. So it increasingly looks like we are pushing towards a credit event as banks lending tightens. Now, the banks have not have never tightened so much before, okay? Uh, but then they are not lending money. So that is also another reason why the Fed is very concerned because if the Fed is not, uh, the banks are not lending money, then there's no debt to fuel the growth. Uh, we all know that uh, the global economy is actually fueled by debt. So economic indicators will continue to point towards overall weakness uh, as strength in a few is overwhelmed by weakness in others. So sometimes you have a mixed bag uh, of positive, but the, but the underlying negative is much greater and therefore overwhelms the positive. So economic indicators in Europe, German uh, manufacturing PMI came in at 43.1 in December versus 42.3 in November, while services came in at 48.4 versus 48.7 a month ago. And France manufacturing PMI came in at 42 in December versus 42.6 in November, while services PMI came in at 44.3 versus 45.3 a month ago. UK manufacturing PMI came in at 46.4 in December versus 46.7 in November, while services PMI came in at 52.7 versus 50.5 a month ago. So looking at this, it seems like France is even in a deeper trouble, okay? Because they saw a weakening whereas Germany has seen a strengthening and UK is, is still doing much better because they still have the services which is in expansion. 
So the contracting in the manufacturing sector shows that the deindustrialization of Europe will become a major pawn in its economy, especially the Eurozone. And according to S&P Global, Eurozone's PMI data are roughly indicative of its GDP falling on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis at a 0.2 to 0.3% rate in the fourth quarter. Following a 0.1% contraction in the third quarter, the fourth quarter decline would push the Eurozone into a technical recession. So even the S&P Global is anticipating that, whereas we have anticipated it for a few months already that the, the industrialization in Europe, in Europe will soon become a major factor that will affect its future GDP growth. So, Q3 GDP was uh, negative 0.1%, and we can see here if we follow the change. Now, the quarterly GDP is already at negative 0.1%, but then if you look at the PMI, it actually has been deepened okay, over here. Ever since the Q3 GDP has been announced, but there has been a far deeper uh, fall in the PMI, and therefore, that's why S&P is anticipating that it will take a leg down in Q4 and therefore we will see a technical recession in Europe. So Eurozone CPI came in at 2.4% year on year in November, down from 2.9% in October. UK CPI came in at 3.9% year on year in November, down from 4.6% in October. So the CPI seems to be improving. Okay, inflation is actually uh, falling. Uh, but with the ongoing diversion in shipping to a much longer route via the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, inflation could reignite in Europe, especially when it also impacts the shipment of energy during the current winter months. Eurozone retail sales was one negative 1.2% year on year in October and negative 3.6% year on year net after inflation. So UK retail sales was positive 0.1% year on year in all these are actually November. So UK retail sales, positive 0.1% year on year in November, negative 3.8% year on year net after inflation. So sometimes I used to measure it uh, net uh, by taking it into, uh, by taking uh, into consideration inflation because once you have, you build in the inflation, then you realize that the increase in sales could probably be due to increase in prices, may not be necessary be in the increase of consumption uh, in terms of quantity. Okay, so that's why I actually take into consideration the CPI and then look at the net retail sales. So the current strength in the euro versus the US dollar has helped to reduce the inflationary pressure in Europe. It has also made the cost of goods cheaper because DXY went down uh, means that the euro has strengthened against the US dollar. Now, this could change due to the rerouting of shipping in December because if, let's say, um, if the shipping takes a longer period from uh, uh, instead of through the Suez Canal, but they have to go a round trip, a round, a round trip uh, around Africa, then the shipping cost would actually escalate, and because of that, the you the uh, the inflation would actually go up. So with the expectation that inflation would go up, then the ECB might not want to mirror the Fed, okay? Because inflation has suddenly spiked up again. So that means that the euro strength could still be maintained. So uh, a lot of choice, um, not much choices for the uh, ECB is you know either they if they mirror then inflation would go up 
but with the rerouting of shipping, inflation would go up even more. But if they maintain, that means that uh, the, the credit in Europe continues to tighten and therefore its economy will continue to suffer. So here is the container shipping rate. Okay, you can see that um, this is the period when the Houthis were targeting the shippings, uh, the, the ships in the Red Sea. You can see that container shipping actually spiked up uh, by almost uh, 25%. So what could happen in Europe? Now, PMI seems to suggest that Europe could face another month of challenging economic conditions as inflation returns. The ECB could follow the Fed and ease its, its monetary policy, thus ensuring that inflation returns with a vengeance. Okay, so if the Fed decides to ease, then inflation would actually go up higher because the euro would have weakened. Widespread demonstrations will prompt governments to control the masses, but this will backfire. Already, they try to uh, make it illegal to, to demo. Okay, so, you know, the democracy and freedom, all this, you realize that it's just a narrative that they use when they want to impose something heavy on developing countries. But when it happens in their own country, they will impose a lot of restriction against demonstration and freedom of expression. So already the population is revolting on a number of issues pertaining to agriculture. If you go on to YouTube, you will see that in Germany and in, uh, uh, especially in Germany, the farmers are bringing the, uh, their livestock manual and they are pumping it on in front, dumping it in front of the parliament, okay? So these are what the farmers are retaliating against. So there's a lot of restriction on agriculture and that's also in politics and immigration. So uh, the AFD party in Germany, which has uh, won a lot of local uh, uh, elections, they are now under pressure by the government by stating that, you know, they are, uh, they are, an, they are extremists and so forth. Okay, so... Uh, it's always a narrative, okay, freedom and democracy. When it, when it's much easier to impose on others, but when it happens in the country, politicians will still want to retain power. So this will likely continue for much longer than anticipated. So Europe is turning protectionist in its trade with China, and this could hasten its deindustrialization and increase the inflationary forces within the continent. So they want to say that it's unfair for China because they have a they, they are previously they have a trade surplus with China, but right now they have a trade deficit. So they want China to buy more LV bags, okay, buy more red wines, buy more champagne, but they wouldn't want to sell China ASML uh DUV as well as EUV, which actually carry a much higher value. Okay. So now they are complaining that you know China has a uh has a trade advantage. So at the end of the day, China produced so many things, okay? And right now, especially in Yunnan, it's becoming well known as a, uh, uh, as a red wine producer, okay? As a wine producer in China because a number of, uh, of uh, uh, experts from France actually found out that the soy in uh, Yunnan is similar to France and they have brought their uh, winemaking um, uh, expertise into China. So, you know, China is also producing uh, wine right now, okay? How many, you know, China cannot be importing trillions of LV bags, okay, or Gucci bags for that matter because the, the Chinese, actually the spending in luxury goods uh, overall globally have been in decline, okay? And um, how much bags can China keep on importing? China actually need those uh, uh, high-tech as well as uh, uh, high-tech equipment from Europe. But because of the sanctions, uh, they are unable to sell to China. So right now, they are blaming that China is uh, taking advantage of them. Now, the other thing, if, if they impose tariffs on Chinese-made EVs, into Europe, 
what will happen is that if China retaliate against Mercedes Benz, BMW, Audi, okay, then you know the Europe will hurt even much more. And perhaps because of the autom uh, automotive sector, fearing that fearing of all these tariffs, a lot of them have actually, you know, um form alliance with Chinese companies because the Chinese companies have the technology, especially when it comes to autonomous driving and in terms of battery, whereas the uh, German car manufacturers, they are good at design, they are good at aesthetic, uh, aesthetics, they are also good in terms of uh, uh, um, uh, the production, okay? So that's why they are forming alliances. Just in case that if there is retaliation, then their brands will not be hurt in China because they are in alliance with Chinese companies. So, uh, but then that means that the manufacturing from Europe is moving to China. Okay, so there is a lot of things that uh, the Europe is following its uh, sanctions, you know, following the US sanctions and imposing the same on China. It's not going to help them. Okay, if they really open up their economy, uh, and they are selling the uh, the high tech equipment to China, then you know the trade will be balanced off because China has a thirst for technology. So that is why, with all this going on, you know, Europe trade with China will remain in deficit. Now, when it comes to China, CPI was a negative 0.5% year on year in November, down from 0.2% in October. Negative 0.2% in October. Core CPI came in at positive 0.6% year on year in November, unchanged from October. PPI came in at negative 3% year on year in November, and down from 2.6%, negative 2.6% in October. Now, because of all this set of data, We have a lot of economists, economists from the Western media stating that China is in a deflation. China would soon enter a depression. Now, who in the first place, consumers like us, want to have inflation every year? If we want, what we want is a, preferably, there's no, uh, that's a lower price even, okay, because we want to have uh, more purchasing power. If let's say the price comes down for whatever we have in our, uh, the amount of money that we have, we can purchase more. If let's say the price actually comes down. So why would anyone want to wish to have inflation? So some people say that because uh, the price is coming down, therefore it is showing that there is deflation in China. Well, if let's say there's deflation in China, by right, it must be accompanied by a destruction in consumer demand. Okay. But right now we have retail sales coming in at 10.1% year on year in November and up from 7.6% in October. So how can that be deflation? And some economists like to look into uh, history, okay, and says that, um, uh, well, that's what happened in the Great Depression. It started with falling prices. Yeah, okay, but that was also caused by a destruction in consumer demand. And therefore, prices continue to fall. But that's not happening in China because if we take, if we take the same yardstick in measuring the uh, the core CPI in the Fed, okay, the Fed is wishing that for the core CPI to come down, okay, but then the core CPI in China is still up, it's not falling down. So therefore the narrative actually fails, okay. And the other thing is that industrial output went up 6.6% year on year in November, up from 46 in October. So the economy is firing on all cylinders. Industrial output up, retail sales also up. Services sector gained 9.6% year on year in November. Up from 7.7% in October. 
Now, China fixed asset investment went up 2.9% year on year during the period from January to November 2023, unchanged from the period from January to October 2023. China's survey urban employment rate stood at 5% in November, unchanged from October. PMI manufacturing sector came in at 50.7 in November, while PMI for manufacturing sector came in at 51.5, which signaled a expansion. So China's international trade in goods and services totaled 3.7 trillion in November. Exports of goods came in at 2.1 trillion and imports hit 1.6 trillion, resulting in a surplus of 0 0.5 trillion. Now, the other thing is that a lot of people are saying that uh, imports in China has been very weak. And therefore, that means that, you know, consumers are, are not consuming like before because consumers must be, uh, if consumption is very high, that means import must be very high. So you can see that there's a lot of uh, contradiction. On one hand, they say that um, uh, falling imports means lower consumption, but then retail sales actually went up. The other reason why imports is not continue to grow up to, to, to grow at a very strong pace is because China is manufacturing a lot of the goods itself. Okay, for example, China cannot import uh, technology okay, from Taiwan, from Korea, Japan, and the US. So what it does, it produces its own. So that is why as China produces more of its own, the, the, the previous pattern of having to import would gradually wind down. Okay, and because China continues to uh, expand its manufacturing, that means that it can start exporting what it previously doesn't have. For example, like chips. Now that the US is very concerned, okay, because they are worried that China will use the will use the opportun opportunity that it has right now in manufacturing the uh, legacy chips, okay, those 28 nanometer uh, chips and dump it in the market. So they are very worried because right now China is manufacturing a lot of 28 nanometer chips. And that is the kind of chip that is normally used for military equipment. So when the US says that they are imposing restriction of China from having to achieve uh, uh, 5 nanometer, 7 nanometer for military use is actually all BS. Because military use, they can use 28 nanometer. There's no need for 5 nanometer or 7 nanometer. So it's just a reason to give to actually prevent China from uh, growing its technology uh, progress. So these are all, again, narrative driven. So power usage in China climbed 11.6% from a year ago to 763 billion kilowatt hour in November. Power consumption by primary industry increased by 12.12% year on year while power consumption by secondary and tertiary sectors rose by 9.8% and 20.9% respectively. Residential power usage saw year-on-year -year increase of 10% to 93.6 billion kilowatt hour. So central government collected 9.17 trillion in revenue, up 6.9% year-on-year, and local government saw revenue increase 8.7% to 10.84 trillion. Tax revenue total 16.84 trillion in the first 11 months, up 10.2% year on year. Now, if you look at the power consumption and tax revenue, then you know it, remote, it, it reinforces the expectation that China's total GDP for 2023 could be within reach of IMS target of 5.4%. Now, on the other hand, tax revenue in the US actually dropped. So if let's say tax revenue in the US actually fall, that means that its GDP is actually not very strong, right? Because if let's say the, the GDP is strong, therefore there will be more, uh, more activities, companies make a lot of money, and then there will be opportunity uh, for government to tax higher. But if let's say there's a tax that is falling, 
But then how come US companies are announcing uh, higher earnings? Now, higher earnings is different from higher profit. Okay, because throughout the years, ever since the, uh, the Fed started printing a lot of money through QE, a lot of companies have been doing share buybacks. So when they buy back their share, the amount of share in circulation becomes very low. And even though you have a profit decline, but the number of shares actually decline, then you still have very good earnings. So that's why, you know, you see that you just have to look at the headline news. Every time it's reported, it is reported as earnings beat. They never say that net profit beat. It's always earnings beat. Why? Because everything is based on the assumption that higher earnings means higher profit. But that is not the case. If let's say there's higher profit, it certainly will mean that the tax revenue will be much higher. But if let's say there's a falling tax revenue, that means that net profit has not been growing. But the expect the, but because of the share buyback, it results in higher earnings. So this is something that you need to discern. Sometimes if you look at a company, do not just look at its earnings, but look at its total net profit, whether there is growth in the net profit or not. Okay. Now, then China's technology uh, uh, and um, uh, and heavy industries continue to grow. Now, China's commercial vehicle sales jumped 44.6% year on year to 366,000 units in November. And during the first 11 months of this year, China commercial vehicle sales stood at 3.67 million units, up 21.8% year on year. China's output of power batteries and storage batteries saw the output reaching 87.7 gigawatt hour, up 40.7% year on year. In the first 11 months, the output rose 41.6% year on year to 698.7 gigawatt hour. The sales of batteries came in at 84.2 gigawatt hour in November, up 12.3% month on month. In November, production and sales of new energy vehicles hit 1.07 million and 1.03 million units, respectively, up 39.2% and 30% year on year, respectively. China mobile phone shipments climbed 19.7% year on year to over 29.16 million units in October. 5G mobile phones account for the majority of October shipments, totaling 26.44 million units, marking a 35.5% year on year growth. In the first 10 months, total cell phone shipments aged up 4.2% to 230 million units. Domestic brands continue to dominate China's mobile phone market with shipments rising 7.2% to 18.01 million units. So actually, Apple is seeing declining sales on a uh, quarter, quarterly basis in China. And China is actually Apple's one of Apple's largest market. And, but then you see that the stock market just don't care uh, of uh, lower sales in China, but then they, uh, they are more uh, enthusiastic about uh, Apple's uh, sideline business, which, which is actually in fund management. Okay, that's why they say that Apple has gone from a tech company to become a fund manager because they have a lot of cash and they use their money to generate returns, not so much in terms of uh, uh, breakthrough technology and such. You can see that the difference between iPhone, uh, iPhone 15 uh, to and iPhone 14, you know, there's nothing major changes in it, okay? But when Huawei introduced their uh, Mate Pro 60, you, you know, you can directly connect, okay, to the satellite for communication. So there's continued weakness in China's real estate market. Investment in property development cooled negative. 9.4% year on year in the first 11 months of 2023. Investment in residential buildings amounted to 7.89 trillion, down 9% year on year. Commercial housing sales shrank negative 8% year on year in terms of floor area to 1.01 billion square meter. In terms of value, commercial housing sales dropped 5.2% year on year to 10.53 trillion. So nothing fantastic about it. It's still a major ton. Okay, in its economy. 
Major Chinese cities continue to report falling home prices in November. The National Bureau of Statistics said that 70 large and medium-sized cities saw month-on-month -month declines in both new and second-hand home prices. In the four tier first-tier first cities, namely Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen, prices of new home aged down negative 0.3% in November, while prices of resold homes Drop one negative one point four percent. Home prices in thirty one second tier cities and thirty five third tier cities in general also went down in November from a month earlier. The sluggishness. In the real estate market will continue for some time, but recent cut in deposit rates by China four major banks could spur some buying activities. And just uh, a few days ago, a major um, project launched in Shenzhen, where the property price, I think, was valued about um, uh, quite high. I think it's in the millions of renminbi, okay, was fully sold out. So I think uh, people are seeing some value right now because uh, even the first tier cities have seen some decline. And then the government has cut down the uh, deposit required previously it was 30 to 40 percent deposit right now is 20 to 30 percent deposit now in terms of uh, technology uh, besides what uh, Evelyn have mentioned earlier uh, there are some breakthrough coming out from China in that China here Yahoo Finance mentioned that China poised to break 5 nanometer barrier because uh, its processor is currently being used in its laptop. And blacklisted Chinese chip maker SMIC is working on 3 nanometer process technology despite US sanctions. And then we have a China commercial rocket launches more returnable spacecraft to orbit. Now, this is a private company and it is following closely the footsteps of Tesla. What could happen in China in January? Now, China's economy will likely remain strong in January, driven by domestic consumption, heavy industries, and technology sector. China's PMI manufacturing could be borderline between contraction and expansion as, as heavy industries. Some performance is offset by a sluggish real estate. However, however recent news suggests that the government aims to tackle the issue, which include building affordable housing for the masses. EV's export will continue to power ahead uh, in January as the major producers expand their footprint aggressively overseas, especially in ASEAN and Latin America, especially in Brazil. China trade surplus will stay in positive territory as imports growth likely decline as population and businesses opt for local products. Increasingly, local share of products in the automotive and smartphone sectors have grown. And in terms of geopolitics, let's explore some military com potential military conflicts. Now, Russia is poised to expand the war in Ukraine. Putin has alluded to this in his recent press conference, which lasted more than four hours a week ago. I believe if you have watched the clip, he did mention that in Odessa, everyone speaks Russian. Okay, so that is indirectly hinting that Putin will be gunning for Odessa and I think uh, as I always expected will eventually link to Transnistria. So uh, eventually putting uh, uh, Ukraine into a landlocked country. So NATO could be delivering F-16s to Ukraine in the near future which Russia threatens will retaliate should NATO bases be used to launch attack against Russia. Increasingly, analysts are speculating that NATO will be forced to put boots on the ground should Russia continue to capture more territories in Ukraine. So here, you know, the Moscow Times announced that they just claim uh, Russia claims to have captured another Ukraine uh, city. So, in terms of the involvement of Yemen in the Middle East, conflict has shattered the U.S. invincibility as European nations shun being part of a coalition to patrol the Red Sea. Iran has threatened to close the Strait of Gibraltar via its proxy and the Mediterranean Sea unless 
Israel stops bombing Gaza. And this could escalate the situation further. So if you look at it, here's one choke point, uh, which Yemen now threatened the entire shipping lane. And here is also another choke point, which ships need to pass through. Okay, if they have rounded the trip from Africa, they need to pass through here into the Mediterranean Sea to get their goods unloaded in the southern ports of Europe or in the um, uh, in Turkey and in, uh, in Israel. So, if let's say these two choke points becomes a problem, then inevitably we could see a widening of the conflict because that is when it was spread to an area here and not just restricted to here. So this is uh, an event that could actually uh, become very dramatic should uh, these two choke points materialize. Now, the other one is tension between China and the Philippines, which has uh, escalated with both parties accusing each other for the escalation. The Philippines have recently conducted joint military sizes, military exercises with both the US and Japan. The conflict in South China Sea is another instigation by the US to contain China via its proxies. So you can see that the US always uses its proxies like in Ukraine, okay? Uh, and eventually uh, the whole of Europe suffer as well, okay? Because Europe has deindustrialized because of the sanctions against Russia, uh, making energy very expensive. And because of that, a lot of the Industries in Europe have actually shifted overseas or have shut it down altogether. And in January, Taiwan will have its elections. If the pro-independent candidate William Lai wins, cross-strait tension could escalate. Unless William Lai declared Taiwan's independence, war in that front is unlikely. However, a win by William Lai could mean further loss of preference trade with China and uh, China, I don't think, will attack Taiwan. Uh, it will play the long game, but uh, it will actually uh, put pressure on Taiwan's economy because Taiwan's major trade partner is actually China. And the other thing is that Venezuela has laid claim on the Esquicubo, which has become the latest flashpoint in Latin America. The Esquibo was awarded to British Guyana in the Paris Arbitral Award in 1899. No citizen of Venezuela was permitted to participate or represent their country's interest in the arbitration and thus remain a sticky issue to this day. So the uh, Venezuelans okay, are claiming that you know, the Esquibo has been uh, taken out from them without any uh, of their participation. So in October 2023, it was reported that the Venezuelan military was building a runway near the border with Guyana's Esequibo to develop the region. Now this prompted the US and UK uh, response by sending their military asset near the area in support of Guyana. So again, you know, this is another potential conflict in Latin America. You can see right now, okay, uh, there are a uh, coup as well as a uh, tension in uh, West Africa and it's in the Middle East, in South China Sea and in the Korean Peninsula and right now we have Latin America where else, uh, you know, is there no other tension? Okay, so it has become, you know, the, the world is like uh, uh, moving on a very fast on a very uh, quick tangent, okay, to to potential conflicts, which will be very difficult to pull back from, and this is the worrying trend that you know if it you know that January could be the start of something that will determine what happens for the remaining of the year, and the other thing is that uh, in terms of breaks. Uh, the BRICS 10 begins in January. Uh, Argentina has already shown it's, you know, that it's not interested, so it's no longer part of the BRICS 11. So Ethiopia, one of the five nations selected to join BRICS starting from 1st of January, has just defaulted on its 
one dollar billion uh one billion dollar loan. How Ethiopia Progress Next will give insight on how the BRICS nations chart their de-dollarization program. So there are uh some whispers that you know Ethiopia, if it defaults, you know, it wouldn't change its standing with the BRICS because they will just use uh, local currencies to loan to uh, Ethiopia. So RMB denominated oil trade could be thrust into the limelight. In fact, uh, a lot of uh, work in the background is being done right now. I expect more cohesiveness among oil producing nations. Although Angola has dropped out of the uh, uh, OPEC, but Brazil is going to enter into OPEC and Brazil is one of the top 10 oil producers, whereas Angola is not. So interestingly, Saudi Arabia and UAE were reported to be scouring for assets with mineral resources to invest. So you can see that uh, this could be the trend that BRICS nations must secure their local currencies with hard assets. And that is why I think uh, we see Saudi Arabia and UAE are looking at opportunities to invest in mineral resources. And gold will gain prominence as the dollarization process escalates and more nations divest their US dollar holdings. So, uh, very long session. Back to you, uh, Evelyn. For those that are interested, yes, the webinar is recorded. Yeah, for those that are interested to join us on the 2024 Astrology and Global Trends membership is still open. Okay, and we are going to close the membership very soon because it's in a one-year cycle. And I'm sure that uh, our members that joined us last year has gained a lot of insights. Okay, and the benefits of joining the 2024 membership is that you will get the 2024 Wood Dragon Astrology Global Trends book discounted off from your membership fees. That means it's like the book is free because the membership is actually 168 ringgit and discount off this 40 ringgit is 128. But you have to buy the book from a platform from our online publisher platform. And you can join our monthly forecast and Zoom session, get the presentation files and full video contents two weeks ahead before we release it to the public in the YouTube channel. And also a private Telegram group where we have a lot of discussions going on. And PC also give a lot of hints and tips as well and foresights that will enable you to make better investment decision, potentially enhance your investment portfolio by selecting those um, right sectors. Okay. And then um, you, as a member, you will have early access to our annual astrology and global trends talk. Okay. Um, on the annual energy. And from here, this is what our member has says about us in terms of what we have from last year and from this year as well. And our last year's track record, we have forecasted movements in uranium stocks successfully, gold prices, and the growth of Xiaomi EV sector. So as PC said, if you have you know taken the action at the right time, you could have, you know, gain, make some profit. In fact, you will cover back your membership price many, many folds, many, many times. Okay. Yeah. So for existing and also mem existing members who renews and also current 2024 members, uh, you will get a guide on your potential sector aligned to your own energy. Uh, that means I'm um, through your birth chart where I will do the analysis and check. You know, sometimes we are aligned to certain energies, certain types of sectors that is suitable for us, like we can see the opportunity better. So you will get the personal guide and also um, the monthly power date to improve your own energy fuel. Yes, investing sometimes also depends very much on intuitions in the Telegram channel. Okay, so that means you can see the timing better 
in 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 investing. Okay, because every time investment is about also timing. The contents that we will talk about uh, for the annual membership astrology talk, where we will release the content only two months later, is the Chiman chart for 2024. What is the potential profitable investment using Chinese astrology research? And also how to install the investment intuition into you. And will there be a market crash in 2024? So um, these are all the exciting contents that we will have. The ebook itself, as I say, is water ringgit, uh, roughly around that, like the US exchange. And the membership per year is 168. So the total after discounting is actually only 128. And if for a less than a cup of Starbucks coffee per month, uh, you can get so much the guidance from the subject matter experts like me and also PC, where we are combined two methods together to sort of forecast what is going on month by month and also, you know, um, the year's energy as well. So for those that are interested, um, you can get the book from this link. I later on will drop the link and also um, the link to enroll for the membership as well. Okay. And yeah. We will go through the summary, um, PC. Yeah. Okay. From my side is that you need to take profit quickly. Okay. So I things might be difficult to bite through uh, because a row of teeth are suddenly with one young line there. Uh, and then government will weaken with military activities in different regions and continue growth of technology and innovation. So over to you, um, PC. Yeah, I think the other, uh, the summary is still the same, okay? Uh -huh. like conflict zones are being identified in other small pockets of the world. Just now we mentioned Venezuela and then right, uh, and then at the uh, Gilbrata, Strait of Gilbrata. So corporate bankruptcies have resulted in many layoffs, but we can see this being extended to the finance, finance industry uh, as we move forward, okay? Because I think... Uh, something might have triggered the Fed into, into action. And, uh, and that is why I think uh, they wouldn't have done this unless you know, something bad has actually happened, which they are now trying to salvage. But they have not made known what it is, and we can only obey. Now, food inflation will remain sticky uh, in many economies because um, like just... Uh, few days ago, I saw that rice have reached another new high, okay? And uh, this is very concerning. And at it is, um, there is a lot of, uh, uh, it's rainy season again, and floods are actually returning. So that could actually hamper some pro food production in other areas. And I think, uh, U.S. technology innovation will continue to focus on software design and China will focus on manufacturing. Uh, new operating system coming out of China could alter dependence on U.S. OS and we already see it in a number of uh, smartphone mm, yeah, uh, Huawei. operating system, Huawei, uh, Xiaomi, as well mm. as Oppo. And the other thing is that, but U.S. will continue with their uh, software and design, especially where it matters on I, uh, on AI. And China will actually intensify its uh, technology innovation in manufacturing. And like, I think uh, for this year, 50% um, of the global robotic systems were actually... Uh, From China. Uh, were actually, yeah, you know, all of it was... Uh, in China. China accounts for 50% of the upgrading of robotics. Mm. So that is why China is transitioning towards that. And uh, just today, I saw that uh, there's a, the World uh, Intellectual uh, Property uh, Organization, Intellectual uh, Property Organization, actually came out with a new publication and once again, China topped the amount of uh, 
of uh, new patents that are being uh, that are being uh, uh, are patented out there. In fact, the the there's a huge glaring difference between China and the U.S., which was uh, U.S. actually was in second position. And that is also because a lot of uh, the U.S. themselves actually have driven a lot of uh, uh, well-known Chinese scientists who actually help a lot of U.S. institutions secure global patents. They have kicked them out because of racism, okay, and because of uh, Sinophobia. They actually kicked them out and then they returned to China. So right now they are actually uh, helping that, uh, helping the Chinese uh, innovation uh, uh, development. So, Actually, the government, the China government also encouraged all these scientists to go back and yeah. they have given them a lot of incentive as well, like housing, yeah, especially, special uh, housing and all these things. Yeah. Especially the uh, even they push quite a lot from the from the chip sector from Taiwan. I mm. heard that uh, uh, some of the engineers are being lured by, uh, you know, uh, very, very high pay grade. Okay, some could be in the millions to get them to 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 start developing in 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 China. I'm, yeah, and, I'm not surprised. And recently, uh, TSMC's uh, CEO has just been fired because mm. of the uh, of the development in their fab in uh, Arizona mm. that uh, has run into a lot of difficulties. Uh, because number one, uh, US doesn't have that kind of talent pool anymore. Because you know the U.S. education level uh, has actually uh, declined. Okay, they mm. don't have so many skilled workers in the technology sector, especially uh, it involves semiconductor. Because the U.S. Uh, like companies like Nvidia, uh, 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 AMD, and all those, a lot of them are very good in chips design, okay, and in architecture. But then, you know, like Nvidia doesn't have a fact. All their chips are actually produced in TSMC. Mm. So when TSMC move over there, there's not enough talent. And when there's not enough talent, they hire the Taiwanese there. And then the people... Got the pushed. Americans, yeah, by uh, Intel, by all these other American companies. Uh, yeah, you know, they, they, they got pinched by, by mm. other American companies, never mind. But then the local American workers doesn't like that. Mm. Uh, they, they they don't like that. They say that, you know, it should be Americans who are working, not someone from Taiwan. Mm. And they refuse to work in shift. Mm. So right now, the, uh, the, uh, the, the thing is, Biden promised $150 billion, if I'm not wrong, uh, or $100 billion to actually finance the build-up of the Fed. And to date, most of the Feds are progressing, uh, uh, you know, to a very high level of, uh, um, to, you know, they have progressed a lot. But then only 50, uh, 35 billion was being paid. Whereas they have already dumped in so many billions, but then the payment from Biden, I mean, comes in trickle. Mm. So that's why TSMC have not even got a single cent from it. Mm. And because of that, I think they decided to fire the CEO. Because, you know, they spend, I think, tens yeah. of billions of uh, US dollars. Yeah. You know, but then they can't even start production until 2025. Mm. And even Intel, uh, I think, was it Intel or another US com company also said that they are postponing until 2025 because there's not enough talent in the industry. And all the while, all the chips were actually produced in Taiwan. So there's no American talent there. Okay. And... Uh, and suddenly the fab has been built, but then you know it's not starting production anytime soon. Uh yeah, because of the manufacturing technology, designing and manufacturing is both totally two different things. Uh. I think they yeah. sort of overlook that manufacturing requires a lot of process control. You can just design the chip uh, to do, you know, to whatever that you want, the you pack more um items of you pack more transistor into a chips um through a design but to manufacture is another story altogether the process control that is involved uh, in such design uh, it will be totally different so you need expertise in that also yeah so um 
Evelyn, you have anything to add? Um, I don't think so. We will leave the Q&A session. If anyone has any questions, uh, maybe let me just drop the link into the chat. If anyone is interested to join us for the, you know, um, 2024 membership, you are still welcome to do so. The book and also the this one. So anyone has any questions for tonight? I think the China market for 2024 will still be a bit of up and down. Uh, right now, it's mainly because there's a lot of restriction for, uh, for uh, fund managers.